for the introduction of this event, I'd like to introduce Allison Phillips from the, the local chapter of the League of Women Voters. Here's Allison. Hi. Good evening. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I am Allison Phillips, representing the League of Women Voters, Palos Verdes Peninsula, San Pedro. We are pleased to present this event to assist voters in uh, the upcoming election. You are all to be commended for coming out tonight. The League of Women Voters is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that works to promote good government, citizen education, and citizen participation. Educational forums like these are important venues for furthering the League's mission to inform voters. Forums sponsored by the League or in which the League participates must be nonpartisan and must ensure all participants are treated fairly and equally. This year, we welcome you to celebrate the League of Women Voters' 100th anniversary. Visit our website at lwvpalasverdes.org if you're interested in any of our events or becoming a member. There are membership forms in the lobby next to the snacks outside. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. There's my little plug. I would like to thank tonight's League of Women Voters uh, volunteers, Nancy Marr. She is our voter service chair, Vi Ungerich, close enough, uh, Linda Herman, Cindy Conlin, Condon, Ann Shaw, Judy Mazlich, and Karen Buresh, who is sitting in the back. She's our president of our local league. Now, I would like to introduce our moderator for the evening, David Holtzman. David Holtzman is a public health professional who moved to Los Angeles from Oakland in 1997 and has lived in the Los Angeles area ever since. He graduated from Princeton, the University of Michigan School of Public Health, and UCLA's School of Law. His professional career includes service as a state scientist, work as an environmental consultant specializing in air quality, and a term on the hearing board at the South Coast Air Quality Management District. He is currently doing contract legal work. Mr. Holtzman has served as a condo association president, a board member of neighborhood groups, and president of the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles. Thank you, David, for moderating tonight. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. As you heard, my name is David Holtzman. I am a member now, just a simple member of the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles. I want to thank you all for coming tonight to the forum on Rancho Palos Verdes Ballot Measure B. Um, and I do want to thank Allison Phillips there and her team of volunteers, who she just mentioned, for all their work in helping make tonight possible. Thank you all. Um, I am told that election officials have prepared a booklet that's available here somewhere, which includes the measure text itself, the analysis by the city attorney, and pro and con arguments. So we don't need to read the whole thing for you. You might have that booklet or you can see it later. Uh, it's also available on the city's website. Um, I will tell you briefly, a little summary. I'm trained as an attorney, so here's a, a summary of what the measure would add. Um, it would add several sections to the municipal code relating to large hotels, golf courses, and amusement parks, including a section on protecting hospitality workers by providing panic buttons and other protections, a section on workload, a section on transportation to and from work, and a section on, a, a section on minimum wage, as well as sections on enforcement, record keeping, retaliation, and the city's authority to make implementation rules or establish additional standards. All right, there are a lot of people here. I'm glad the room is full, um, but it may be hard to hear the speakers. So first of all, I'd like to ask all of you to please silence your cell phones now. Um, and while you're doing that, I will also ask you to keep very quiet during the proceedings, and please do not applaud or boo anything until the end of the forum. The League of Women Voters, <laughs> The, the League of Women Voters has rules about these things, and uh, that's one of them. Another one is we generally don't allow people to wear buttons or logos on one side or the other of an issue or for one candidate or another in the, the room. Um, but we do provide opportunities for each side to distribute materials uh, outside the room after the forum is over. Um, after the forum's over, the staff here has asked that people leave this room uh, 
uh, as soon as you can, um, but they'll have plenty of time to schmooze in the lobby, I think, or get outside and do that. All right. Tonight's speakers are, for the pro side, the proponents of the ballot measure, Alisa Quiros, Alisa Quiros, Quiros, uh, and um, Maria Meza. Uh, Ms. Meza's daughter, Leslie, will be helping her as an interpreter. So there they are. Um, and for the con side, City Council member Susan Brooks in the green, and Terry Hawk, the president of Terranea, uh, to my immediate left. Tonight's forum will be videotaped for showing on RPV TV. Um, so good quality video of the event should be available shortly to the public. If you want to record your own video, please do so from the back of the room so as not to distract other people. If you take pictures during the event, um, please do so quickly, and if possible, block the light from your screen because it can be distracting. Um, in fact, now before we get started would be a good time to take pictures. So let's take 30 seconds now for pictures. If people want to take pictures of the event, uh, do it now. Speakers, you may stand up if you want for the pictures or stay where you, yeah, you're all, they're all comfortable in those nice chairs. So uh, yeah, 30 seconds, everybody take out your phone and get some shots. I'll hold the microphone in a dramatic pose. <laughs> All right, it looks like everybody's had their chance to do that. So um, the pro and con sides will have equal time for opening and closing statements. Opening statements will be five minutes each. Closing statements will be 10. And for answering questions from the audience, we'll give each side two minutes to answer each question. Much of tonight's program will involve the speakers answering written questions from the audience. So for that purpose, please submit questions on note cards provided by and collected by our ushers. So raise your hands uh, to get their attention if you will need a card or you have a question ready to be collected. Question sorters over there um, will screen the questions for relevance, repetition, civility. And since we probably will not have time to get to all the questions, I've asked that the question sorters try to prioritize questions that address issues not fully addressed in both sides' opening statements or that have already been addressed. All right, so let's get started. We're going to do this just like in a um, civil or criminal trial, the people <laughs> moving, doing, filing the lawsuit or filing the ballot measure go first. Uh, with the opening statements, and then that will, the uh, people opposing the ballot measure will go second with the opening statements, but at the end, uh, the first closing statement will go to the people opposing the ballot measure, and the last closing statement will go to the people uh, who propose the ballot measure, the proponents. All right, let's get started. It's time for, oh, I have uh, league timers here, uh, who I've meant to mention, <laughs> Vi and Nancy, uh, who have uh, paddles, that they're gonna hold up for the speakers to see and for me to see, and I will cut the speakers off if they're running past time. So five minutes now for an opening statement from the pro side. Go right ahead. Buenas noches, eh, mi nombre es María Mesa. He trabajado en la industria de la hospitalidad por 13 años. Ella es mi hija Leslie Mesa, que ha trabajado muy duro para pasar esta ley aquí en la ciudad de Palos Verdes, que es la medida B. Hi, my name is Maria Meza. I've worked as a hospitality. Um, I've worked in the hospitality industry as a room attendant for 13 years. This is my daughter Leslie Meza, who is also working very hard to pass Measure B. Soy una de las muchas mujeres que ha trabajado en esta industria para cambiar la cultura acerca de lo que es la agresión sexual en lo que en los hoteles. I am one of many hotel workers fighting to change the culture of sexual assault in hotels. Año tras año, he visto mujeres humilladas, atacadas y amenazadas por los huéspedes. Year after year, I've seen women being humiliated, assaulted, and threatened by guests. Algunas mujeres tienen el valor para reportarlo, pero muchas de ellas no tienen el valor para hacerlo por miedo a que tengan represalias por parte del jefe. 
Some women have the courage to report it. Some stay silent in fear of retaliation from their boss. He conocido muchas mujeres que trabajan en Terranea aterrorizadas de compartir sus experiencias de acoso sexual, de abuso sexual, por miedo a represalias del jefe. Muy, muy pocas de ellas tienen el valor de hablar. I've met women that are so terrified to share their experiences at Terranea Resort. Very few of them have the courage to speak up. Mi amiga Sandra Pesqueda trabajó como lavaplatos en Terranea Resort. Cuando ella reportó el incidente de abuso sexual, ella fue despedida después de ello. My friend Sandra Pesqueda was a dishwasher working at Terranea Resort. She reported her assault and soon after she was fired. La dinámica de poder entre el huésped del hotel y nosotros los trabajadores es muy definida, ya que preferimos permanecer en silencio y no hablar a estos abusos por miedo a perder los recursos para poder vivir. The power dynamics between us and a hotel guest are so defined that we will rather stay quiet before losing our livelihoods. Deben de entender que dependemos de un trabajo para proporcionar vivienda, comida y los recursos para proveer a nuestros hijos. You must understand we depend off of one job to provide housing, food, and shelter for our children. Muchas mujeres como nosotras vivimos trabajando día a día, cheque sobre cheque, eh, aguantando las cargas de trabajo. Many times we live check by check, enduring inhumane workloads. Sin la medida B, mujeres como yo seguire, seguiremos eh, calladas, no reportando estos abusos por miedo a represalias y reportar esta agresión sexual. Without Measure B, women like myself will continue to live in fear of retaliation for speaking out against sexual assault. Mi deseo es que todos se unan a este esfuerzo para proporcionar medidas de seguridad a mujeres como yo que proporcionan soluciones con sentido común. I wish everyone would join this effort in providing more safety measures for women like me, providing common sense solutions. Les pido su apoyo para mujeres como yo para en contra de lo que es el abuso sexual. I ask you to stand with women like myself against abuse. My name is Alicia Quiroz. Uh, I volunteer my time in support of Measure B. The reason why I do this is because I've worked in the hospitality industry. Um, and I've experienced firsthand how vulnerable workers can be uh, when faced with situations of sexual assault. Measure B provides us common sense solutions to the reality that we face of sexual assault today. Um, and as a volunteer, I'm, I'm proud that thousands and thousands of RPV residents have supported Measure B and signed in support many, many times. And this shows us the true values of, of RPV and this community. Um, after talking with so many residents, it's obvious that Measure B is your measure, and Measure B is something that this community started because they value human beings, they value people like us over profits and politics. Um, and I trust, we trust this community will, will finish uh, what, what you started. Um, and, and for this reason, we ask you, on behalf of hospitality workers in this city, to vote yes on Measure B and stand with women against abuse. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, well done keeping to the five minutes there. Appreciate it. Um, time for the con side. Go right ahead. Thank you. Hello. I'm Terry Hack, president of Terry. Okay. Sorry. Hello. I'm Terry Hack, president of Terranea Resort and a resident of this beautiful community. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this very important forum. To everyone here, to the members of our community watching at home, to Councilwoman Susan Brooks for joining me in opposing Measure B. This is Terranea's 10th anniversary, and the Terranea family of associates are honored to be a part of this community. We have been the first job for hundreds of Peninsula young people and for seniors returning to the workforce. Our tax contributions account for nearly 20% of the annual city budget. However, Measure B is a threat. Deceitfully, a union 
trying to organize our workforce gathered signatures to qualify this measure on the ballot. Terranea offered to hold a fair, democratic, secret ballot election so our employees could decide for themselves. The union rejected this. The union raised the issues, the need for panic buttons, higher wages, and charges of workplace mixed misconduct. Please know we have the state of art panic buttons. They already exist at Terranea. Our wages are higher than the Measure B requires. We have a no tolerance policy for workplace harassment. In fact, the charges of workplace harassment only began to appear when the union started their organizing effort. Frankly, I am surprised to see Unite Here, Local 11, hiding behind a front group called South Bay Women's Project. This group is not located anywhere in the South Bay. In fact, their address is the union's law office in downtown LA. The South Bay Women's Project Yes, on B committee officials are the three co-presidents of Unite Here. Incredibly, the two speakers to my right here in support of Measure B have been introduced as volunteers for South Bay Project. However, according to a public record, they are both on the payroll of Unite Here and their titles are union organizers. The Yes on B committee sent two paid union organizers to represent them. Why? Because there is no independent Yes on B committee. It's all paid for and run by the union. And they say Measure B is not union organizing? Please stand with our family of employees who deserve to have a say in their future and vote no for Measure B. Thank you. Susan? Thank you, Ms. Heck. <laughs> okay, no more, no more applause, whatever, like that. Okay, um, I have a, the first. Just holding my time. Oh, is oh, there more time? Me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, to have time? something to say for the There's city. There's more time. Keep on going yeah. then. You're on. Um, first, Reset um, the clock. <laughs> welcome everybody to the place where we have our city council meetings. And I'm sorry that the flag of the United States is not able to be presented this evening because we were told we could not do that. Um, but I am a councilwoman here and have been one for many years and three times a mayor. For those of us lucky enough to live here, we call Rancho Palos Verdes our paradise preserving our quality of life and maintaining local control over our destiny is of paramount importance to all of us. However, our mayor, our council, oh, I have one minute, all the candidates for a city council, the Chamber of Commerce, and dozens of community leaders take great exception, are encouraging you to vote no. Uh, never before has an outside entity had the umbrage to try to organize the workforce in our city without even giving that workforce a say in the matter. We are certainly not anti-union. We have a union in our city, and we have our own city government union. There is nothing hospitable about the proposed hospitality ordinance, however. Um, now, I have to fast forward from my speech because I guess we lost some time there. But I will just say that if passed, Measure B will cost the taxpayers a tremendous amount, and we will end up having to basically form our own HR department just to run Terranea because of the hundreds of thousands of dollars in oversight it will take just to run through the myriad, including free transportation to and from work. And that's your time. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, so what, you may obviously address additional points when you're answering questions. Um, I have a couple of questions from the audience. The first one um, reads, who or what organizations um, are funding each side, pro and con, of Measure B, and how much is each spent? I will elaborate a little bit and say that um, there is legislation in various states and being considered in California that would require ballot measure campaigns for the state to list their top five donors. 
Um, so maybe in answering this question, um, you can do that if, if, if you know. Sure. So um, I'm going to let the con side go first to answer the first question. So uh, you'll have two minutes. Go right ahead. We are a pack of one. Terranea Resort is funding no on Measure B. Anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. Okay, Ms. Brooks, did you want to use your time to finish your statement? Or? Oh, actually, I could. You're right. I do have some time. Um, so I just want to point out that um, why is Measure B threatening millions of dollars also for our city? For what reason? So an outside union with no ties to our community can collect $1 million dues a year forever from the pockets of the workers they allegedly want to protect while reducing their opportunities to work overtime. Time needed to meet family budgets. Who is really working for the workers? Who's working against the workers? And who's working to get more dues? More workers, more employees equals more dues. And that's what this is about. It's grossly unfair. It's over a million dollars a year that they will be making just on this. Can I Thank say you. One? If I can add one thing, if I may, if our um, colleagues on the other side don't answer their question, I actually have the information of who's funding their uh, campaign. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so, for the pro side, uh, please discuss uh, funding and spending surrounding the initiative. Of course. Um, so, we are volunteers with the South Bay Women's Organization. Uh, we are funded by Unite Here Local 11, and we are backed by a number of organizations, including um, supporters from St. John Fisher, Wayfarers Chapel, St. Peter's by the Sea, IQRA Islamic Center, the Taiwanese Presbyterian Church, St. Luke's Presbyterian, St. Francis Episcopal, Rolling Hills United Methodist, and the ILWU. Um, that being said, in, in the first reporting period, um, the, the Terranea spent $700,000 to oppose this measure. Um, again, this is a, a common sense measure with no cost to the taxpayers. Um, the, the employers, ho all hospitality employers in the city of RPB, including the Terranea, Trump National Golf Course, any um, as our moderator said, any golf course, amusement park, any hospitality establishment will follow this law. It is, again, a common sense solution at zero cost to, to any taxpayers. And it's really a shame um, to hear that 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 is a, a rumor because it's the employers that will pay. <sighs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we're going to move on to another question. Um, oh, I'll get that. This question comes from the audience and asks what Terranea's record is on treatment of employees. I will broaden the question so that the speakers can address um, any of the employer's treatment of any of the employers who would be subject to this measure uh, and the history of their treatment of employees. Um, uh, the audience, I think, will find this relevant. So um, the con side, please. I mean, the pro side, go first, please. Um, so look, in, women have come forward time and time again um, saying, I'm too scared that if I speak up, I'll lose my livelihood. Uh, like we were explaining before, hospitality employees don't have the luxury of moving from one job to another just because uh, we're scared to report what happens at work. Um, women against women, whether it's our coworkers or across the county of LA, have, have come forward crying, terrified that what happened to Sandra Pesqueda might happen to me and I can't afford to not feed my children. I can't afford to not pay my rent this month. If I lose, even one week of work because I lost my job or I quit because I, I couldn't take it anymore, what am I gonna, how am I gonna 
make, make ends meet for my family. Um, this is the kind of conditions and stories that we hear over and over and over again from, from mostly women because we are the ones that, that mostly clean the rooms. There are men also, so I don't want to, I don't want to um, not acknowledge that men do the work and men are also in danger, but we are the ones who do the, the burden of, of the room cleaning, um, serving the food, and, and it's, it's horrible to hear, especially as, as people who have worked in the industry and know how vulnerable women can be when we knock on strangers' door. It's horrible to hear stories like that, and it's heartbreaking, and we want all women and all employees just to have simple protections at work where they can call for help if they need it and not be scared of losing their livelihood. Okay, um, please address the treatment of employees by the Tarnier and the other businesses, if you'd like, that will be subject to the Yes, ordinance. thank you. About two months ago, the employees of Taranea were surveyed, all employees, all hourly employees, and we were certified as a best place to work in America, a national certification. I think that speaks volumes for what our associates think about working at Terranea. We are proud of our workplace culture. We have several different methods in which people can report any kind of difficulty in their workspace. They can tell their managers, they can go to our HR department, they can call our corporate hotline 1-800 and report anything, even anonymously, and they can talk to Terry directly via an email that goes directly to my office, and it started the day we opened in 2009. Our employees know that they can come speak to me, and I will assist them through their issues. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Hack, I just wanted to ask, did either of these women ever work at Terranea? No, they did not. Okay. So um, I want to go back to the cost issue because we didn't get a chance to explain it on the city side. Um, this is our municipal code. It's very heavy. There's over 622 ordinances listed in here. Um, it takes, when you put a law on the books in Rancho Palos Verdes, it takes money and it takes people. It takes extra resources, and it will take a tremendous amount to enforce the law. Because unlike maybe what they're expecting, uh, we are a city that enforces the law. And anybody who's a resident here knows we do, like it or not, right? So this is very important, and, and it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars for workers. We hire, have to hire extra staff, basically an extra HR department and it could potentially cost millions with TOT no, revenue right for Thank public you. safety. Thank you, that's, Thank the, you. that's the time on that question. Um, so we'll start with the, the con side to my left, to your right, on this question. Um, and it's about panic buttons. Uh, the questioner says that, uh, uh, well, Tyrone pointed out that they already have some sort of panic buttons, but the questioner suggests that maybe some people find the panic buttons insufficient. Um, so please uh, address the issue of panic buttons and the procedures that are to be followed upon an employee pressing one of the panic buttons. Um, first of all, do other businesses who would be subject to this ordinance already have such panic buttons? And second of all, um, to what extent do you feel like the procedures in Measure B, required in Measure B, would be an improvement or uh, unnecessary? So go right ahead. Um, clarification, just as it relates to panic buttons of that, Measure B? Right now, this question's about panic buttons, and I think there's enough okay. to talk, and the procedures to be followed and protections to be given to well, those who use panic buttons. Work Go right ahead. Workplace safety has been top of mind since we opened in 2009. We have continued to evolve our emergency procedures throughout the 10 years that we've been in business. And each year, as a new technology comes apparent, then we adopt that. We've had a handheld iPad system since 2015 for our housekeepers with a button that reads, needs assistance. We then evolved to a noisemaker 
um, panic button that's handheld, and that was in early 18. And we began researching the state of the art system that would not track our employees. That was very important. It took us a year and a couple of months to find a system in which we could ensure safety of our associates. So the panic button looks like this and it's lifeline technology. And you push it three times, which I won't do right now because our security people would all come and get me. And it silently GPS locates that associate. I will get an indication as well as all of our security staff and our senior members, and we will follow that associate wherever they go. And we will assist them, and we will call our very capable law enforcement if we need additional assistance. I feel very confident that we have found the state-of-the-art system. We will be the only install in the state of California that the very, very latest technology. And if something else comes, into our technology window, we will adopt that as well. Thank you. Um, I'm sort of passionate about this. Um, all right, so uh, now we'll uh, turn it over to the to pro side to discuss the panic buttons, the current state of the panic buttons in the community uh, the, and the businesses that would be subject to the ordinance and um, how Measure B would change things. Sorry. Uh, it's very important, I think, that we understand that Measure B is much more than panic buttons. Um, the part that discusses panic buttons provides the security to employees that it's not just for one employer, it's for the employers that are hospitality establishments in the entire city, and it would provide the guarantee that any operator, owner, management that came in the future would be required to follow the law. It also requires that workers who use the panic button are free of retaliation. It would require that they have the ability to have time to call the police, call a counselor, a doctor, a therapist, a family member, a manager, whoever they choose to call after they've used the panic button. It would require signage in the hospitality establishments that informs the, the customers that this, this establishment takes sexual assault very seriously and it is against the law. So that customers are informed right when they go in the establishment and when they're using the services to make sure that employees are safe. It also would allow employees, if they are unsafe in their current work location, that they have the ability to change work locations for their safety. Um, and honestly, if, if there are employers in this city who already give panic buttons, um, and, and to us, noisemakers are not panic buttons, if they do give panic buttons, then this would not, they, they would continue doing the same thing that they do today. Um, so there's really no cost to them if they're already doing that. Um, but again, Measure B is a solution that provides much, many more protections um, than, than simply a panic button. Thank you. Um, the next question, we'll start with your side there, um, the pro side. It's a cost benefit sort of question, specifically having to do with this city. Uh, the question is, how would RPV residents uh, benefit or be harmed from having Measure B in place in RPV? Um, thank you. Um, is it our side? It's our side? side? No, it's their side. Oh, it's their side. <laughs> Pro side, please. Oh, sorry. Good. Thank you. No. Um, there are many ways that this community would benefit from making sure that Measure B passes and it's a reality uh, for employees in the city. The, I think the most important one I think of um, is I think, wouldn't we want our neighbors, our maybe our granddaughters, our sisters, our who, whoever we know that work in the hospitality industry in the city, which is one of the main sources of employment in this city to be safe and to have these protections at work. Um, so that's, I think, the first and foremost. 
there are a number other of other benefits that would come to the city. I, I think of um, the the transportation part of the measure that would allow uh, and provide opportunities for more employees to take public transportation. It would allow employees to come to work together. It would take uh, traffic, cars, uh, pollution off the streets, and that would really benefit the employees and the community alike. And I know there are some employees who are community members, so it would benefit both. Um, but I think, you know, going back, the most important part and the reason why many of us are so passionate to make sure that this issue um, is, is the most important issue and, and passes is for, for safety. And I know that many of us again, um, have worked in, in the hospitality establishments here or have family members and friends who, who currently work there or may work there in the future. Um, and, and it's, you know, again, a simple safety measure that, that people can use uh, so they can come home healthy, safe, and sound every day after they, after they serve the guests at, at work every day. Okay, thank you. Concept. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, um, let's just make no bones about it here. This is not about panic buttons, okay? Workplace safety is of interest and importance to every single person in this room. It is a law in the federal government. It, uh, there are laws on the st in the state legislature. There are local laws. There are laws sitting in our cafeteria in the back there. There are laws everywhere already on the books about workplace harassment. And this is not about patent buttons because they already have them. And uh, the only reason, by the way, that Trump is thrown into this is for the name. And because they don't apply, there's no application there. They don't have any contact with individuals. Uh, and by the way, they learned, this union learned from experience that they could not use one entity because they did it in Santa Monica and at Westin Hotel and it was thrown out. So they had to use another one. So they threw in, and they surgically removed the golf course at Trump, at, at um, they surgically removed the golf course at Los Verdes, which is a government-run golf course. I'm saying, this just doesn't smell right, unfortunately. And I'm a woman, I know what it's like. I am very concerned about women everywhere, and we all are. And that's not what this issue is about. It has nothing to do with it. The whole thing is a ruse. And I ask you to please pass this message on to your friends and neighbors. Thank you. Uh, Terry, do you have anything to say? Okay, anything else on costs and benefits to no, RPD? I, just, I think it's um, a matter of clarification. In Rancho Palos Verdes, this measure impacts two employers, the two largest employers, myself um, and Trump. It does carve out the county-owned golf course. There are no other businesses in this community that this measure impacts. So I think that that's an important clarification to my colleague. Okay, thank you for your answer. We'll start this question with the con side. Um, this question reads, having minimum wage laws is common practice in the United States. So why is it appropriate or not appropriate to have an RPV specific minimum wage for hospitality workers? That is the question. It's simply not appropriate. California has very stringent minimum wage laws, overtime regulations. They have very, very stringent work rules that we respect every single day. And a single community, can you imagine in our community that only our company, Terranea and Trump, have a minimum wage that prevails every other worker in this community. How difficult is that going to be? We should abide by the state minimum wage, and respectfully, we're already over the prescribed $15 an hour minimum wage that this measure calls for, for all of our associates. Well, I don't have anything to add to that. I mean, you know, the minimum wage is the minimum wage. And uh, I think Terranea has done a great job. They're already way above it. Hail Terranea for that. Thank you. A lot of new young girls and men got jobs as a result of Terranea's employment. 
A lot of senior citizens are now getting employment and reemployed at Terranea. It's helping people in this community. This is our city. And I ask you, when you talk to your neighbors who maybe don't really go to the ballot often, these people are going and walking door to door to low and no propensity households. Talk to your friends and neighbors who may not vote and ask them, please, not to collect ballots, not to allow their ballots to be collected, and rather to deposit them at the post office because uh, there are even things that take place with the local mailboxes. I work with the Postal Service, so I can just kind of tell you a little bit about that. Okay. All right. Or vote on Election Day. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, same question to the pro side. Sure. So in regards to the minimum wage uh, ordinance that's part of this law, um, it's interesting because it is a uh, common practice, should we say, that minimum wage laws are going up all around the country, especially in California, and especially in this area of California. Um, and so just like the panic button provisions and the safety provisions, the idea is that RPV should not be left behind. And if any owner operators change at any of the hospitality establishments or any are built in this city um, in the future, that, that this law would apply to make sure that this city is is caught up to all the other cities around the area. Um, and if there is an employer in the city who already pays higher than the requirements in Measure B, that's great. Um, it will not cost them anything. Uh, so it really doesn't make sense as to why we have to op oppose it, oppose it so much. If we're already paying it, great. Employers that pay higher then the minimum wage should be applauded. Um, and there should be no worry, because it won't affect them at all. Um, again, this is normal in our area, in, in LA County especially. Um, and and that's, that it's, it's, a, it's common sense. Um, so that, that's in regards to the minimum wage. It won't cost, it won't cost anything to employers that already, that already pay the minimum wage. So they shouldn't be concerned. Okay, thank you. You folks are all answering questions a little faster than I anticipated, so we may get to more questions. Appreciate that. Um, next question, we'll start with the pro side. It's probably good to start with the pro side because the questioner is asking that the speakers clarify the transportation provisions, be more specific about the transportation provisions of the measure, and then um, why you think they are appropriate or not. The transportation uh, section of the measure would require the hospitality employers in RPV to provide monthly metro passes or the equivalent thereof. Um, and so it could be flexible, right? The, the, we understand um, that not everyone wants to take the metro or can take the metro. So there's provisions for people to carpool or vanpool. Um, and, and the goal behind this really, like we were saying before, is to make it easier on the employees and easier on the community in terms of the traffic and the amount of cars on the streets and the parking situation. We've heard many neighbors of the Terranea talk to us about how parking is so congested, especially on days where there's weddings at the resort or especially on days when there's events at the golf course. Um, and so it's just a simple measure. And similar to the minimum wage, part of Measure B, it's very common. Many, many of the larger employers in LA County already give their employees Metro passes because it's a way that they can encourage people to be responsible about the environment, people to carpool. It's, it's pretty normal. Um, and so again, just like the minimum wage, it's to make sure that RPV is not left behind and those benefits that employees and residents can receive from being compensated for a Metro Pass, uh, that we can receive those here too. Anything else to add? No? Okay. Um, I heard some mention before so, of- Lauren, the other side goes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my bad, my bad, okay. We're working it I'm out. I'm ready to uh, in jump into the next question. Okay, uh, two minutes from the, the, the con side now, please. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you. Who 
brings their employees to and from work. It's pretty amazing to think about that. I don't think, actually, that it's normal. I do think that Terranea has an active policy of carpooling. We incent our associates to carpool. I'm not really even sure what this piece of language in the measure is saying. And quite frankly, I think it's going to take a whole bunch of lawyers making a, no disrespect to lawyers in the room, making a whole bunch of money to try to figure out how you actually figure out what this measure is saying. But this transportation is, to my knowledge, it's the only measure or city council um, action that the union has put forward in the surrounding communities that have a transportation component in it. So it's really sort of outrageous, this piece of um, the measure. So, um, and I'm really happy that we have a lot of weddings at Terranea. Thank you. And I would just add that I, uh, I really hope this is not an attempt to drive anybody out of business because you can look at, um, I don't know where the Unite Here people are planning to take this kind of an initiative, but if they're trying to include other um, localities that do not service hotel rooms, then um, they could be trying to apply this to other restaurants in Rancho Palos Verdes. Can you imagine that? We would be, um, would be a first in the nation for something like that. And that would be outrageous for us to have to go down to something like that. All right, thank you, Nell. Yes. Um, and we'll start with you on, on this next question. Um, I, I heard mentioned before of some election integrity issues. Um, mm. And th this one is uh, specific to sort of campaign resources. And I don't know to which, to the ex I don't know the extent to which the premise of the question is true. But the, the question asks, is it right for the city council to be used to campaign against Measure B? Well, I can just say that the city council is, um, the city council took a vote because we were asked to, uh, you know, this was going to go on, whether or not to put this on as an ordinance. And as some cities, some of the more liberally oriented cities like Long Beach and Santa Monica, Seattle, some of these just adopted it by proxy. And uh, we did not. We said, let the voters make a decision. So by saying, let the voters make a decision, we decided as a council that we would vote on whether or not we supported it. So we took a vote. All five of us oppose it. All of five of the candidates many of you are here tonight, oppose it. No, the Chamber of Commerce opposes it. Leading community leaders oppose it. Um, so as far as um, whether Terranea is using this, is that appropriate? I mean, it's We're just repeating publicity. fact. The fact is our city council, all five members, voted no against this measure, and all the current running candidates have um, said they oppose this measure. And our great city, um, our Chamber of Commerce, many of who are here this evening, and many of our staff members that are here tonight, we all vote no. But we, you know, that's just a fact, it's not. Okay. All right. Um, the pro side, please uh, address the propriety of having the city council be involved in this campaign. Well, look, um, I, I think we all understand the reality of politics, and we all understand that people use their power and their position how they choose to. Um, it is a shame. Yeah, especially you. It is a shame that public servants would use their time and resources and position and power to not stand with women against abuse. Oh and many, God. please many, be quiet. Many women like us have come forward and asked public servants who are politicians around the country this city being no exception, 
help us, stand with us, support us. What we're asking for will not cost barely anything to the employers compared to the safety that it will provide us. And it's really disheartening and sad to see that in this city, the politicians who should be serving the community and should be making things better for, for the community minutes. are doing just that. Mm -hmm. no, please don't interrupt. You can turn off your microphone. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> Are, are doing just the opposite, and they and they and think it's a game and think it's a joke. Um, safety and security in all the ways that Measure B lays it out is not a joke. It's our livelihood and it's our safety. Um, and I I honestly think that you would think twice if you knew what it was like to knock on a stranger's bedroom day after day and night after night. I, I honestly ask you, think about your granddaughters. Think about your nieces and your daughters. Would you laugh at them if they came and said, stand with me, help me? I, I, we just want simple safety measures. So it's a shame to see how they're reacting. Uh, thank you. All right, there's a, a, a question here. No, we already did. <laughs> there's a question here that uh, was partially just answered because I heard that some other municipalities have adopted similar measures. Um, the, the question is, uh, do other municipalities or what other municipalities have ordinances similar to what Measure B would create? And uh, what were the situations uh, that prompted that, if, if so? And then, um, is there anything unique about the situation with large resorts on the peninsula here uh, that's driving this particular measure? Uh, so like we mentioned before, there's many cities around the country um, where it started with housekeepers coming forward and saying, I feel unsafe, I've been assaulted, and I don't know what to do. Um, New York was one of the first cities where a housekeeper came forward after being assaulted by a very high profile uh, individual. Um, and New York was one of the first cities to implement an ordinance similar to Measure B. After that, a number of cities around the country followed um, in a number of different ways. Some of them, they have it because the employers provide that benefit. Some of them, they have it because a city ordinance was passed. Um, some of them have it because the city council decided to pass that ordinance. But there's nothing unique about the safety needs of the individuals who work on the peninsula. If anything, uh, the thing that I have heard is individuals saying, it's very isolated. Um, I work outside, I have to walk outside. Um, and no one would hear. If I, if I use my noisemaker, no one would hear. Um, I've tried to use it and, and no, one, no one came. Um, so that is what's unique to the peninsula and RPV and the employers, or the hospitality establishments and RPV. Um, but the, the requirements of the ordinance, a number of different variations of them are happening around the country. Um, and, and it's time that this city also provides those same protections to, to the employees. All right, go ahead. I have the privilege of sitting on the American Hotel and Lodging Executive Committee and have sat on that committee for 12 years. I also am the immediate past president of the California Hotel and Lodging Association. I'm very very familiar with what's sweeping our country, which is a move by labor to attack the cities in which large and small hospitality entities are there in order to pass ordinances when by matter of um, fact here, if this measure passes, all I have to do is sign a CBA with Unite Here, and I get to ignore this measure. Startling. 
It is not about workplace safety. Our, sa our employees are safe. Not one single noisemaker has ever been initiated. We now have fully GP GPS enabled so that we will be able to see wherever our employees are. We care about our associates and have since the day we opened. And I might add, Terry, um, I might add, Terry that um, when they came to us as the city council, we said, why don't you let them vote? Why don't you let the employees vote? So the bottom line is I believe that you have offered independent, like PricewaterhouseCooper, some independent third party to come in and take an assessment, take a fair vote, a private vote, not one where are you with us or you're against us. Well, we know what happened in the early days of uh, Teamsterhood when that kind of thing happened. So you want to be able to have the privacy of your vote. This is crucial. And that was something that the union denied. They Thank won't you. let the vote. Thank Just you. let the yeah. workers vote. That's your time. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to start this back over here on the con side. Um, both sides will have a chance to address this. Uh, a questioner wants, I guess, some more stories about employees who reported problems and what happened to them. The problems, obviously, that would be addressed by Measure B. So uh, what happened to them? Were they treated fairly? Were the offenders arrested? What kinds of stories can you tell us, please? The first thing that I'll be able to tell you is that we had no workplace harassment situation that we didn't talk about within our ranks for the first seven years that we were in existence. And then, coincidentally, we had a host of six or seven allegations only brought to us by Unite Here after the associate, associates left either our employee or a third party cleaning company. And we haven't had any since 2017. So is that ironic that we have some women? One is too many, but they, I would not exploit those women as Unite Here has done but I could tell you the stories of each and every one of them. There were no police reports made. There were two, there were two um, lawsuits, one which we were dismissed from, that's Sanders, by the way, and another one in which we learned that that associate had a consensual relationship with the person they were involved, and that situation was resolved for less than $3,000, and there have been no others. And how long ago was that? Both of those incidents occurred in 2016, reported in 2017, um, when they both switched to Unite Here Local 11 attorneys. Thank you. Okay, so stories from the pro side, please. Como mujer y haciendo, eh, trabajando en la hospitalidad, día a día nos enfrentamos a situaciones. Cuando la reportamos, lo toman una burla. Mi vida no es una burla, ¿ok? Mi vida no es un juego, ¿ok? Día a día tocamos la puerta, no sabemos quién está detrás de esa puerta. Alcohólicos, bajo la influencia del alcohol, gente que está enferma. Day to day, we go knocking behind a door and we don't know who's behind there, whether they're alcoholics, whether they're under the use of drugs, whether they're mentally ill. But yet we have to work and face these people because we're scared to be retaliated by our boss. Cuando lo reportamos a los manejadores, ¿quién cree que tiene la razón? ¿Quién está pagando? ¿Quién tiene el poder? Una vez más ellos y nosotros siempre somos los trabajadores quienes estamos a un lado. And when we do report, who's always right? The guest, because he's the one paying, because he's the one that's there, and we're just any other, any other worker that can be easily replaced. They don't care about how we're treated. They care about the people coming in and making profit. Yo pido una vez su apoyo para esta medida. Es más que un botón de seguridad. Son nuestras vidas que estamos en riesgo. Tenemos hijos, tenemos familia que nos esperan en casa después de nuestro trabajo. 
it's more than just a panic button. It's more about our safety. It's more about making sure that we're safe when we go to work so that when we come back home, we can be there for our families. And we're there to provide for our families. We shouldn't be deciding whether we're going to provide for our families or if we're going to be okay with the man sexually assaulting us. Oh, okay, thank you. The next question I have is about um, Measure B and unionization. There has been a lot of discussion of unions and unionization here tonight. Um, but the question asks, why is Measure B a pro or anti-unionization measure? So I think the, pro, the, the proponents will go first this sure. time. Um, so to be very clear, the only people that can decide whether they have a union or not are the employees themselves. The city cannot decide, the employer cannot decide. Um, so employees decide for themselves, that has nothing to do with this law. All of the safety protections in Measure B apply to every single employee, whether they're represented by a union or not represented by a union. Um, that is exactly how it's laid out in Measure B. In all of the other cities that we have mentioned, New York, Chicago, Santa Monica, Long Beach, every employee that's covered by measures that are similar to Measure B have the safety protections, the panic buttons, it applies to everyone. Um, and I will just repeat again, it is, it's sad and it's shameful to hear people in power using politics or their position to try to take away simple protections that can help hospitality workers. This is not an issue of Oh, this worker, they're represented by a union, so we're not, we don't have to give them this measure. Or they don't have a union, so we don't have to give them this measure. No. This applies to union and non-union workers. Everyone should have panic buttons. Everyone should have the right to report and the time to report and the ability to move job areas if they're in an unsafe position. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, I just wanted to point out quickly that um, there seems to be an issue that uh, Alicia keeps stating about uh, politicians using something. And uh, so I've been a city councilman uh, for many years on and off and a mayor, and I'm leaving office in just less than a month. And this is about passion and the integrity of the vote. Of 3,000 signatures were gathered for more information not to say they support this, and they were gathered, I believe, under false pretenses. If you were told that they didn't have panic buttons, they need panic buttons, they don't have these things at Terranea, women are being molested, women are in a closet, we've heard everything. I want our, the intelligence, I believe in the intelligence of our voters, that they have the right to get the full information and get both sides. And I think, Alicia, that your words are quite disingenuous when you make these comments because you have your degree in union organizing from Notre Dame, so I'm not quite sure how much you've been knocking on those doors. All right, there's one minute. I see Ms. Hawk has the, the legislation itself out. Um, I do have the legislation, and just to make a correction, that provisions of this measure is carved out if I have a collective bargaining agreement. So how can that say that some employees that are not covered by a collective bargaining agreement should be on this measure, but oh, by the way, if I sign with the union and form a collective bargaining, then I can carve out some of these provisions. That doesn't make sense to me. It's either, so, why write it that way? Why is that provision for collective bargaining and carve out in this document? Okay, so there is that specific provision in the proposed ordinance. Um, there's a question about the consequences if Measure B fails. And 
we'll take it over here first. Uh, the questioner wants to know um, about how working conditions and unionization um, efforts will be affected if Measure B fails. Will there still be, well, what, what, what will happen if Measure B fails for in the, you know, not just Terranea, Trump, et cetera? Well, I'm confident that Measure B will fail because we have appropriately pointed out what this measure really is all about. I am quite confident that Unite Here Local 11 will continue their arduous tactics against our property. I can't speak for Trump, but the behavior that has happened that currently is protected by First Amendment rights is deplorable. And I'm sure that it will continue until they re believe that we have resolved the associates of Terranea Resort do not want unionization. If they were granted a vote and they voted for a union, I would bargain in good faith with that union on behalf of the 1,200 employees that I care about every single day. Okay, that's a promise. Um, please, so the pro side, what happens if it fails? Um, I'm reminded of a story uh, from a housekeeper in a city who doesn't have a protection like Measure B. Um, and this woman, in tears, um, told me this story where she was cleaning the guest room and the guest room happened to have a glass door in, in the bathroom, dividing the bathroom and the bedroom. Um, and she knocked, no one answered. She said, housekeeping, no one answered. She opened the door and saw a silhouette behind the door and she started running out. A man who appeared to be drunk opened the door and started grabbing at her and she was terrified. Um, she walked down the hallway as quick as she could. She was yelling for her coworker. She, she was saying, help, 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 I need help. Um, the coworker did not hear. She was in a room, cleaning a room. And the woman had to basically run around to be free from this man assaulting her. I think of women like her. And I think that's what would happen. That's what would keep happening if Measure B did not pass. Um, and that would be a shame. Where that woman works, luckily that city has a measure that is very similar to Measure B um, and has the ability to report without retaliation, to have help, to call for help. Um, and when I see her now, she it's like a burden lifted off her shoulders. Um, so I think of women like that woman, whose name is Soledad. I think of Soledad. Um, and that's, that's what would keep happening. And there's no need for that. And, and this city should not have values that allow that to happen. Um, so it would, be, it would be really a shame if Measure B did not pass. Oh, OK, thank you. We'll have time for just one more question uh, before we go to closing statements. I'm going to sort of merge together the two last questions I was handed. Um, the question says, the question here says, what are the key provisions of Measure B that you are most for or against? And I would also like, in, in your answering the question, if you can explain um, how those provisions would be different from existing law. Um, that's another question, wants to know about the differences from existing law. And would that be a good thing or a bad thing? So please explain the, the provisions of Measure B that uh, you were most for or most against, and uh, how they would change existing law and how you feel about them. That's a lot of, but two, two minutes each. Yes, go first. Thank you. Um, so uh, you know, at the cost of being repetitive, I, I think we've been very clear. The most important part of all the parts of this law is the safety protections for employees. Um, and again, it's not only a panic button. It is the protections of people not being scared to lose their job 
for reporting sexual assault. It's people not being scared to have to return to the same work section um, if they're in danger. It's guests being notified of signs that gives them a, a heads up, like, hey, if you're thinking of doing this, don't do it here, not in our city, not in this establishment. That's the most important part of this uh, measure to us. And obviously, the other parts are very important, but if anything else, people should be safe at work and have the security that if they use their rights and they ask for help and they call for help, first, someone will come and someone will hear them, and second, that they, their well-being, their livelihood, um, the check that they can bring home to their family every day will continue after they report the assault and after they ask for help. Um, so it's, it's really, we, we ask you to stand with women and, and vote yes on Measure B because that's the most important part of this measure. Okay, now the con side, the uh, key provisions and uh, how they differ from existing law. Yes, key provisions, if you think about the provision that calls for work rules, 4,000 square feet for our housekeepers to clean in an eight-hour day, which means our housekeepers are going to be done with their work day in about six hours. So do they go from full-time associates to part-time, and then I have a whole bunch of other part-time people to finish the rest of the day because the provision also called, the measure also calls for a limit on overtime. Our housekeepers live on overtime. When they're getting ready to put their kids back to school, they take an extra day or they take a, another half a shift in order to augment their income. So overtime is important for people. And I would love to have our associates that are already trained to be able to have the, the overtime that they wish. It should be their choice, not a measure limiting overtime to two hours a day, and I have to give them a week notice in order to have two hours. And then the panic buttons, which we already have. And I think it would be interesting to ask Maria, and I don't know if this is appropriate, but to ask her if she has panic buttons in her hotel and why there's not Measure B down in San Pedro. So that might be an interesting it's question to ask. hotel. Right, I know. But um, the issue is if we're about panic buttons, which we already have, work rules, which are very arduous, the transportation, which would be very complicated, and the city of RPB, RPV gets to be our new HR um, coordinator in order to take care of all the paperwork and the, the um, amount of paperwork every hour of every day of every person and every square foot that they clean and we keep those records for three out, for three years and anyone in this room can ask for those records. Okay, thank you. That's um, all the time we have for audience questions. I apologize um, that we couldn't get to more, but we did a pretty efficient job. We got to a couple more than I expected. Uh, it's now time for closing statements and we'll reverse the order from opening statements. Each side will have up to 10 minutes, you don't have to take all 10, uh, for closing statements. And uh, the con side will go first. So whenever you're ready, please. Yes, um, and thank you all for being here. And I promise we won't take a full 10. Everybody needs to, to get going. But I would like to reiterate that the people on the panel to my right are paid union organizers. That's their title, regardless of what they do on their volunteer time. So that puts a, a rather interesting um, veil over the issues that we're um, discussing here. I care about safety of our associates, and I have cared. I've been the only leader since we opened. I signed the five-star promise for AHNLA, and I'm one year ahead of that requirement. The employees of Rancho Palos Verdes are thriving. We have over 3,000 people who have been received 
promotions since they started. We are building careers, not jobs. Someone who started as a housekeeper is now a housekeeping manager. Someone who started as a Catalina Kitchen server is now senior planner in our conference services. And I could go on and on and on. We care about women, we take care of women, and we are a good employer. I hope that the city of Rancho Palos Verde voters will allow us to continue to manage our business with dignity and grace and give back to our community in a way that's meaningful to enhance the quality of life for all of us in Rancho Palos Verdes. Thank you, Terry. Uh, 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 just, just a minute, just a minute. Thank you. We're going to wait till the end for all that. Uh, did yeah, uh, you have anything to thank add? Thank you, Terry. That was uh, uh, excellent. Um, so, you know, we're here tonight and we've heard a lot about some very sincere, I'm sure, stories, uh, symp sympathetic stories. I'm, I am to them. I am a woman. We've, most women have had situations. But, you know, we have workplace safety guards in all of our workplaces, and Terranea has them especially. This, again, ladies and gentlemen, with all the stories that we can tell, this is not about those stories. This is about union dues, and we have to remember that. This is really about a very aggressive union, not a big one, mind you, because I used to be a member of the UFT, United Federation of Teachers. I started out, by the way, graduated from Columbia University in New York City. I went to the worst ghetto in the nation. And you know what? I learned firsthand what it's like with unions. And I, you know, it, eight years later, if you crossed that picket line, you could not go and sit in the cafeteria. So let me tell you, there are, there are repercussions that can come. And I really, really urge you to realize that for each worker, um, you know, they'll be paying $1,000 in union dues. And that will be incremental, by the way. And also, they will have overtime taken, taken away from them. So do I care about the workers? I sure as heck do. I want those women to be able to go home and feed their families, because that's what a lot of this is. If you, they can't feed their families, what happens is you get a group of other people on the dock so that they can, on the docket, so that they can be added to the payroll so there are more workers and more dues and you get a million dollars a year from this one entity. It's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. You know what's really wrong? Is that we're a bedroom community. We're a beautiful bedroom community. We're, we're our paradise. And this has come, these outsiders have come to our city. None of them are from here. And, you know, the, it has been a real travesty that we have had to go through this. And why, does, why do I and the rest of the city officials and all the candidates support it? Because in our hearts, we know it's wrong for Rancho Palos Verdes. It is wrong for Palos Verdes Peninsula. Frankly, the way this is written, with free transportation for everybody, it's wrong. It's just downright wrong. So we ask for your um, vo no vote. And you know, I'm gonna ask you, ladies and gentlemen, stand with the women and vote no. Thank you. All right, now uh, we'll close with the proponents of the measure. Uh, 10 minutes. So m measure B is like we've been talking about all evening. It's a very common sense solution. It will not cost the taxpayers anything. If the employers are already, as they're claiming, providing state-of-the-art noisemakers, they're already paying above the minimum wage, and a number of other things, it won't cost them barely anything. The other thing that we want to reiterate with you is that the the women who work in hospitality establishments in this city have come to us and asked for help. They say, we cannot speak freely because we're terrified, we're scared, this is our life. Um, and it may be a joke to some people in this room, and, and be it what it may, but people's well-being and livelihoods are on the line. And so we ask you to put yourself in those employees' shoes for just a second and think about what it would be like to live paycheck to paycheck and have 
a paying guest, I mean, think about the power dynamics of a paying guest and a hospitality worker. This law would, would help those employees a little bit have the confidence that they could be safe at work. Um, so we ask you, vote yes on Measure B. Thousands and thousands of your neighbors have committed to vote yes. Thousands and thousands of your neighbors have signed in support of this. This is your measure. The only way that a measure can get on a ballot in any city in LA County is if the residents put it on the ballot. Um, there's no other way. So your community has shown its true values in supporting human beings and people's lives over politics and multi-billion dollar companies. Um, so we encourage you to finish what your community started to make sure that employees are safe at work and employees feel free to speak up at work. Um, and I want to address again uh, what we've already addressed, that there's no other way possible under the laws in this country for employees to form a union other than the employees choosing to form a union. That's it. The company can't decide, no union can decide, no city can decide. Um, so the fact is that it's employees' choice and that has nothing to do with the protections in Measure B. Um, so again, we ask you join thousands of your neighbors and vote yes on Measure B to make sure that you stand with women against abuse. Thank you for your time. All right, now let's have a, let's have a big round of applause for all the speakers. Oh, oh no, I'm oh, sorry, I thought, I'm sorry, I heard thank you for your time. I thought you were all done. Okay, there'll be more applause, but first, Ms. Reza. Una vez más, exponiendo mi voz como mujer y trabajando en la industria y escuchando muchas experiencias, muy malas experiencias de mis compañeras, yo pido el apoyo para nosotras las mujeres. Son nuestras vidas que están en riesgo. Son nuestras vidas, es nuestra seguridad, y con esta medida las cosas pueden cam van, a, van a cambiar. I ask you guys once again to stand with me and all my fellow workers that I work with again, for Measure B in order to protect them and against the companies who do not want to protect us. I want you to vote yes on B because it will make a change in the way we work and the safety in which we feel. Más. Una vez más, muchas mujeres tenemos el miedo a reportarlas porque al reportarlas somos ignoradas, no tenemos el seguimiento para sentirnos protegidas por nuestros eh, manejadores. Once again, I ask you to stand with us. It's hard for women to speak up against these issues because we are retaliated, retaliated by our boss and there's no follow-up with the guest who sexually assaults us. Pido su apoyo una vez más y voten sí a la medida B como medida por nosotras las mujeres quienes hacemos este trabajo. Una vez más, son los huéspedes, muchos hoteles están abiertos al público, no es la gente también, son manejadores, hostigamiento por parte de los abusos, por parte de los manejadores, abuso por los huéspedes, abuso por gente extraña ajena a la propiedad. Hay muchos lugares que no tienen seguridad y aunque la tengan, cuando estamos en los cuartos, estamos aisladas y no tenemos la protección. I ask you once again to vote yes on B because many hospitality industries are open to the public. It's not only about guests, it's also about our own bosses. It's also about people who enter the, the property. And when we're in the room, we're isolated. We're not with someone who's watching to make sure that we're not getting sexually assaulted. So we ask you once again to vote yes on Measure B. Gracias y buenas noches. Thank you, have a good night, drive safe. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ms. Uh, Meza, Ms. Kiros, Ms. Hawk, Ms. Uh, Brooks. Appreciate it, you're all uh, being here to speak tonight. Appreciate the audience being here tonight. Let's have a big round of applause for all the speakers now, please. Thank you. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I, I will encourage all RPV voters to get a hold of that brochure with the measure, the analysis, and the arguments, and vote on election day. Thank you very much.